<laughs> hey everybody thank dog it's friday yeah, happy tdif everybody <laughs> we're laughing because i was moving my computer to get it so that you could see what i'm working on today and it was squeaking at me so it's <laughs> it's ready for halloween the geeks and oohs and screeches and all that good stuff so hi everybody thanks for joining us today it's another tdif yay <laughs> I'm Patty Quinn, and I'm here with the lovely and extra super talented uh, and delightful Hillary. Hillary. Hello, yes. everyone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So we are going to be putting together some uh, really fun, super easy uh, howl Oween, as in doggy howls Oween uh, patchwork pumpkins today. So this will be really fun. Yeah. Only just a couple of ingredients and we'll have something really sweet uh, for home decor this holiday. And these ones are kind of fun. Last week we had done one with real live pumpkins, uh, no car, but still live pumpkins. These yeah. ones we're using artificial pumpkins, so they're a little bit more long lasting. So they'll last a couple seasons, hopefully. Yeah. You can use them next year if you wanted yeah. to. Build your collection every year if you wanted. That's a great idea, actually. Um, so. The, I, the first thing that you're going to need is an artificial pumpkin, and mine is wee small, <laughs> tiny. Mine, mine's a tad bit bigger, but yeah. still on the smaller side. Yeah. But you could we, also do this with a large uh, foam right. pumpkin or whatever size, every size in between, whatever you want to use. Exactly. We just both ran to Walmart and grabbed a bag. They have like these little bags of um, artificial pumpkins. I think these are made of styrofoam with little fake uh, stems on them on top. Um, and I just happened to grab a bag that had smaller pumpkins than the one that Hillary had. So hopefully she'll, hers will show you a little bit more of uh, the patchwork kind of technique that we're going to do. But yeah. it does, as Hillary said, it doesn't matter what size you've got. Um, so the next, the first step, I guess, is what you want to do is if your stem is removable, now's a good time to just go ahead and pop that off. Oh. Right. So we just have a little plastic crazy looking stem there. So just take that off and set that aside. And then um, the, the next step you're gonna wanna do is just grab some fabrics. And I've got little doggy bones, perfect for Halloween. I've got little black and white paw prints. Oh, I like your orange and black plaid. That's really cute. Yeah, and these are the ones that I'm using for today, but yeah. I had done some previously where I used a little bit of oh, this. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. So, but they all kind of have a similar color scheme. So mine kind of all have black themes. This one isn't necessarily Halloween, but it's got little black background with colorful doggies on it. So anything like that, mm -hmm. um, stick to a couple of colors, like orange and black or black and white or orange and white. Um, and of course, if they're dog themed uh, fabrics in there to throw a couple of those in there, that's, that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> One of the things about your fabric as well is um, kind of think about the size of your pumpkin and the size of your print. So if you have like my um, pumpkin one that we have, these are really large pumpkins. So right. I'm not, it's not going to show up a full pumpkin on there. So it's just going to be little bits of it. But if you, if I had like dogs that were that large, I'd need a little bigger pumpkin in mm -hmm. order to put that kind of print on. So right. just right. kind of in the back of your mind, think about how big your, how big your pumpkin is and the size of the print that you're going to be putting right. onto it. The idea is then to just cut strips of these, um, fabrics to the length that will wrap your pumpkin uh, from top to bottom. And Hillary's actually doing a little bit different technique today. You're doing really truly patchwork. Kind yeah, of. I'm just, I just made little squares. So I have a little stack of squares here that I'll that I'll be That's using. cute. And then, so the squares really can be any size. Obviously, you might want to go a little bit larger if you have a larger pumpkin, yeah. but you could even do a, a mosaic, right? With a yeah. real tiny squares on a, on a larger pumpkin. That would be cute too. So anyway, so that's the next step is just cutting out your fabric. We've got that done. And then grabbing our good old Mod Podge. We're just going to Mod Podge these fabric pieces to our pumpkin. So the 
the, the way I like to do it is put Mod Podge on the pumpkin. You can put it on the back of the fabric strip if that's easier for you. But I just kind of find, uh, like follow the ridges of mm -hmm. the pumpkin, um, depending on how wide you've cut your fabric strips and just kind of paint Mod Podge on. And you want a good amount, but you don't want to have, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of it. Um, your fabric will be slipping and sliding everywhere. Yeah, and it does kind of, the Mod Podge will kind of come up through the fabric a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Cause at the end we're going to paint over the entire thing again. Right. So, and then you just one take of the other things um, that you might want to at least take note of. So if you were using light fabrics, let's say, and you didn't want the orange to come through when you're right. buying your pumpkin, maybe get the cream colored pumpkin, fake pumpkins, or you could also paint the pumpkin before you started in on the Mod Podge part, whatever right. is easiest. But um, if it's super bright some t or if your fabric's real thin, sometimes the color will come through. I haven't noticed it too much on the fabrics that I have because um, they seem to be thick enough that I I don't really see that color bleeding through on mine. Yeah. It's usually the white color that will show the orange underneath. Mm -hmm. So little bones will be have a little bit of an orange hue. So what I've done though to after I've painted my pumpkin and since I'm doing kind of a strips, the fabric strips technique, I start at the top and kind of work your way down and just press that fabric into the pumpkin and it you may have little ripples here and there but but that's okay um, you just want to make sure that it's as smooth as you can get it and then if you have excess at the at the top or bottom you can cut it and sometimes I've found that even cutting a point at the at the end or at the top because this is a rounded shape yeah um, so the rectangular uh, fabric strips don't always, you end up having excess fabric at the ends. Yeah. And then and you I'm just continue just, that. Yeah, and I'm just kind of, same idea, but just overlapping my little um, squares. So there will be overlap, there will, it, it just makes it more of that sort of patchwork, fabric-y type of. Yeah. Um, design so which i love and you know if you're this is a really sweet idea for those quilters or sewers at yeah. home you know uh or anybody that you have a family that would love something like this that kind of demonstrates that and That's using up some of those rem those little edge pieces uh you mm -hmm. know you can those little scraps of fabric that you're like, what the heck? I, I, that's not big <laughs> enough to do anything with. Well, you could probably do this with them. <laughs> you, can, exactly. you can use the scrappiest little pieces you can find. Exactly. So what I'm what I'm doing now, I've got my second piece of fabric on the little paw print, uh, and it's it's not laying just as as flat as I'd like it. So because I did do a little bit of an overlap over the bone fabric. So I'm just using my brush and I'm kind of tucking a little of that Mod Podge under that um, the fabric that's overlapping it just to kind of glue it down. So you're just using that Mod Podge as a, as a glue. Uh, but again, don't worry if you've got little ripples in it. It actually adds, I think, some an extra flair of that this is when it's all said and done, it's that it's fabric. You know, yeah. it's going to have ripples and wrinkles and folds and stuff, which look really kind of neat. And I was, I was definitely the first time around when I was working on it was um, really trying to get those little folds out and, and you're just, it's not possible because of the, you know, variations in the shape and all that. But once I saw it, once it kind of all came together, I'm really happy that those little folds yeah. and things are in there because it does give that impression of, oh, you can really tell that these are fabric, that they're little patchwork, you know. I agree. I agree. You know, sometimes you think trying to go for perfection yep. um, and then when it doesn't end up being as perfect as you want, it, it's actually a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I've got a little excess here. I'm just going to trim off the ends. So, and I'm just kind of layering. I'm not trying to make it perfect by any stretch. I'm just layering them over the top in a bit of a 
you know, kind of alternating my fabrics. So you can see I have the two black and whites here and I have a plaid right oh, here. Yeah. I'm gonna pop another plaid right on top here. And you can also, uh, especially with this version, um, if you're doing kind of the squares or little remnant pieces, you can cut them to the size that you want too. So mm -hmm. that's kind of nice about this, this uh, style as well. Right. And the other thing to, to note is um, you don't have to have, if you're doing the, the, the style that I've got, these longer strips, um, you don't have to have it fit exactly on that ridge of the pumpkin, right? It yes. doesn't have, it can go over a ridge and a half or, or some, you know, it doesn't have to fit perfectly. Um, so that, that makes that, that task a little bit, a easier. little bit easier. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes rather than cutting, I actually like to pinch the fabric. I've got this extra fabric here. I'm going to pinch it and then fold it down flat. So it's, I'm getting an angle um, at the top without having to cut. And again, those folds really just kind of uh, remind everybody it's this piece of fabric that's on here. Yeah, it adds that texture. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you can hear. I have a little pup up here. I hear him. Leon. <laughs> His uh, sister is at the groomers and he's wondering, well, why didn't I get to go? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the he's already that's a sharp the complaint man. department that you're hearing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets to hang out with mom today. That's pretty cool. bottom half of this piece and show how far I've got. So you can see with mine, I'm, mine's going to look more like stripes. I just picked two fabrics. I've got the paw prints and the bones, and then I'm just alternating paw print, bone, paw print. And this will look really cute when it's done. Oh, that looks really cute. cute. I like um, that. Let's turn for it. little pumpkins, you probably want to stick to just a couple fabrics, maybe three, but um, I think the fewer number. The larger the pumpkin, then you can go crazy with the number of fabrics that you want. <laughs> All right. So I guess hiding Leon under a bunch of blankets in his safe place wasn't, he's still missing. It wasn't picture. sufficient once I started talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can be happier. <laughs> and so you can kind of see I'm just using the Mod Podge around the edge just to kind of tack down some of it around the edges here. But like I said, you'll go over the entire thing once you get all your pieces laid out. Um, but on some of these, it's a little bit easier if you just kind of painted over just around that edge to kind of hold things down where you want it to be. Okay. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for joining us today. We're super happy to have you here. We're happy to have everybody with us. These are fun. All right. I'd be curious, does everybody have their Halloween decorations, their fall decorations up already? I know the stores are filling up with Christmas even at this point. I know. It's amazing how fast you go from holiday to holiday, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I did carve a pumpkin last weekend and then we had a snowstorm and then it was 75. So it's face is getting a pretty oh. good workout. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been very consistent weather. <laughs> okay, buddy, I'll, I'll get you. <laughs> We're gonna have a guest star here. <laughs> He's like, you're obviously having more fun than me. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, you wanna help? <laughs> I'm sure everybody would much rather see our sweetheart, Leon. Yay, Leon! <laughs> Aww. What 
the cutie pie. Yay, Liam's here. <laughs> we need a fellow on the show every once in a while. <laughs> Too much girl stuff going on. <laughs> I know. It's just you and me right now. <laughs> it feels a little odd. It feels a little <laughs> empty in this house. <laughs> Where's that goofy sister of mine? <laughs> I know. That's so cool. It's so great that you guys ended up getting Lulu for him. Obviously for you too, but I know it's been a, a huge benefit for him to have her around. All right. Um, well, I'm just going to add one last little bit here, and then we're going to top this off. We're going to put that stem back on. And you can see my kind of patchworks so far. Yeah, that's cute. And with the Mod Podge, as usual, if you've never worked with it before, it looks kind of milky as you're putting it on. But once it dries, it'll dry to kind of a gloss. So don't worry about that sort yeah. of discoloration that happens. That's not going to show up once it's dried. Yeah. And actually, I'm skipping a step before we go to the stem. Um, then what you're going to want to do once you have all the fabrics on and in place, um, you're going to uh, Mod Podge the whole piece again and kind of let that dry. Um, and so we won't bore you with that because that's obviously a pretty easy step to do. Um, but it turns out really sweet again gives it that shine that Hillary was talking about and then I did an, a pumpkin here the other day and so then with the stem you're just going to want to take some jute rope and you're going to just and any glue I've got some fabric glue yeah I've got this gonna... quick dry tacky glue that I think yeah. works pretty well yeah anything quick drying even hot glue is fine too if you yep. want and then you just wrap the jute rope around the stem and this is while it's off the pumpkin ideally if it, if you can't take your stem off that's fine too you can just put put that on and then we tucked a little leaf underneath the stem glued it and then put put the two uh in place for a nice little embellishment on top which i think it really finishes off um the pumpkin nicely so I just, I found it easy with these little tiny stems um, to kind of put the glue down first. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> you all right, buddy? All right. You have a, leap, a leapfrog in your hand? <laughs> yep, <your lap>? I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Well, I think it's pretty, pretty easy to, to figure out how to do the stem. I'm just gonna wrap that shoot rope around and, and then you just glue, glue the stem back on in place. All right, and I'm just wrapping. Took a little. It gets a little bit messy with the, with the glue, but again, that glue is gonna dry clear. So if, well, mine does dry clear. So. Yeah. Gonna finish up a little bit more of the little pumpkin that I was starting. I'm almost done, actually. Hi, everybody. Hi, Al. Thanks for joining us today. We're making some doggy patchwork fabric pumpkins. We had Leon. I don't know if you had a chance to see Leon. He was just here. <laughs> now you'll hear his little toes tapping around. To the <laughs> he crashed the party. Happy Friday, ladies. Fine work. Oh, you're so sweet. You got to give some extra belly rubs to Missy for us. All right. She's a sweetheart. Okay, yeah, that didn't take long at all. Just to wrap that jute rope around the stem. Yep, of just our wrapping pumpkin. it there. 
And that glue is still a little wet, but you can kind of adjust things if you need to, to kind of get it to sit as you want it, oh, that, that rope. Okay. I'm just cutting off the ends a little bit. I have my last piece of fabric here. But then once you, uh, once you have your little stem wrapped, then you can kind of embellish if you have like some leaves lying around or something like that. You can just tuck them or glue them right underneath. Yeah. Little Understand. leaves or berries or anything kind of fall theme. Yeah. would be cute. I have another one here that's almost pear shape. It was a gourd, but it looks almost pear shaped once I covered <laughs> it. <laughs> Which is fall. That's harvest, right? That's yep. fall. So that's good. Yep. That's cute. And then for my little pumpkin, I had I had this little doggy fabric, but it was too big. As Hillary was saying, the print sometimes can be too big for the size of the pumpkin. But I really want to add a little doggy on there, so I cut out oh, one of my That's little adorable. doggies. Adorable. <laughs> put it on there. So one of the little strips that goes around is a little doggy, just to kind of emphasize our little dog themed pumpkins, so patchwork cute. pumpkins for today. <laughs> yeah, it's so tiny. <laughs> It is. <laughs> I've got this bigger one that's using that same fabric, but you can see more of the dogs and yeah. stuff. So those turned out great. Yeah. These were fun. These were a lot of fun. Oh, Missy said she had lunch. She said to say hi. Well, Aww. good. <laughs> hi, <laughs> <We> Missy. <love. laughs> what a sweetheart. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you're watching the replay, we love you just as much as if you were here with us right now. So thank you again uh, for for joining us for our Think Dog It Friday celebrations. Uh, we had a lot of fun putting these yeah. little Patrick pumpkins together today. It was a lot these of fun. These ones were a blast. Um, yeah. And a uh, special announcement, there's only a few days left on our giveaway. Two. Yeah. I think we get like two days. <laughs> two days left. To sign up. So through the it's weekend a, is you huge. only have through the end through the end of this weekend. So if you haven't signed up for our yes. giveaway, Go check it out. It's on our We Heart Hounds Facebook page and it's pinned to the very top. So you can find that post at the very top and figure and it'll give you instructions on how to sign up for that giveaway and you can learn about the package. And like I say, there's only two days left. So if you haven't already, go now because uh, time's running out. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is. The clock is literally ticking at this point. We are like down to the hours. Days and hours and seconds. And it's super easy. All you need is your email address to sign up so that we yep. can let you know if you're a winner. That's it. Super easy. Um, but it's our way of giving back to everybody uh, in the dog loving community. We just um, really want to do everything we can to service, service and provide you with the best um, offers and products and ideas, fun craft ideas that we, we know how to do. Um, this, this is something that just comes straight from our heart. Uh, to, to all of you. So thanks everybody. Hope we've inspired you to do something fun today and uh, maybe this weekend get some supplies. And as Hillary said, you can build on this decor every year. These will yeah. last and last and uh, you can just keep adding to your collection as you go. Uh, there'll be family heirlooms one of these days, right? Yep. <laughs> they'll, they'll last for more than one season, which is fantastic. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much everybody. Take good care of yourself. Have a great, great weekend and we'll see you next Friday. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Leon. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>